Interpreting Revelation To interpret the book of Revelation, we should consider how God's redemptive plan relates to incidents in the first century, events throughout church history, and future prophetic happenings. Here's Gene to explain this principle. Now, what we need to do here is to think in terms of, of some realities. And uh, let me just share those with you. Number one, most Bible students who believe that the Scriptures are the inspired Word of God recognize that the first three chapters of Revelation are rooted in the first century. There's total agreement on that. Uh, these were seven churches that existed in Asia in the first century. Number two, John was on the island of Patmos probably because Domitian, the Roman emperor, was persecuting Christians. That was the end of the, towards the end of the first century. That's a reality. It's rooted. Revelation, the book, is rooted there in reality in the first century. Number three, the letters given to John by Jesus Christ were directed to the leaders of the seven churches in Asia. On the other hand, there is a significant shift in John's mental location. Now when I say that, physically he was on the Isle of Patmos. Mentally his location shifted. And that's what a vision will do. In this case, he could have had a vision, you know, like Peter did, where he was on a rooftop and the sheets were, was left down. He didn't change locations, he was still on the rooftop. But that's not true of John. There's a significant shift in his mental location from his first vision there when he was recording these letters, in which he was instructed to, to write these letters, and the difference in his second vision beginning in chapter 4. So, so basically, the shift is from earth to heaven. Come up here and I will show you the things that are going to happen after this, that is, after what you've recorded in terms of these seven churches. Now, it's very important, I think, for us to look at the ways different people have interpreted Revelation. And when we look at these four ways, we've got to realize that we're dealing here primarily with people who believe the Bible just like we do. And yet, there is a variation in how they interpret Revelation. And these are the four major views. And as you'll see, even within views, there are views, which shows there's there a lot of a variation in interpretation. So let me walk, the, walk you through these. First of all, prayer's view really uh, is a term that comes from the verb form describing a completed action. That's just a grammatical term that we use in the English language. And we talk about the preterist form of grammar. And when that verb is used in that way, it actually refers to something that is completed. It's done. Now, that helps you to understand why they call this the preterist view. And let me go on to explain that. Consequently, this view considers Revelation as a sketch of the conditions that existed in the Roman Empire in the first century, primarily during the reign of Domitian. In other words, the book of Revelation is describing what has happened, is happening and, and finished happening at the end of the first century. All that John described then is a reflection of the powers and corruption that existed during that time. Now, there's one problem, a big problem, and that is that this view ignores future events that are not already fulfilled or have not been fulfilled. Now let me take you to another view. This is the historicist view. Those who hold to this view interpret the book of Revelation beginning in chapter 4, because this is, this is a very important point. You know, most agree up to, to chapter 4, that's history, that happened, that was present, the seven churches, but beginning in chapter 4 there's a shift, a significant shift. Now the third view, and I'm just going to state this simply, is the futurist view. 
And those who hold to this view generally believe that all the visions revealed to John from chapter 4. See, everybody agrees <laughs> from chapter 4 on. You know, 1, 2, and 3 was history and it happened. But from chapter 4 to the end of the book will be fulfilled just prior to and following the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the futurist view. In other words, when, uh, when the, the voice said, John, come up here, and I'm going to show you what is going to happen hereafter, that, that God fast-forwarded history from our perspective uh, to, to the end of, uh, of history as we know it, uh, to just before the coming of the Lord Jesus. In other words, from chapter 4 on is getting very close to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And everything that happens there relates to what's going to happen just before Christ returns within a relatively short period of time. So that's the, the futurist view. We'll come back to that in a moment. The fourth view is called the idealist view of interpreting Revelation. Also called a spiritual view. In other words, you basically spiritualize everything. And, and the spiritualist view, or idealist view, who take this, those who take this approach see the entire book, chapter 1 all the way through, as a conflict between good and evil that per persists throughout history, but with a particular application of the church age. So here you have these four views. Now the question is simply this, which view seems more accurate? Well, let me give you this uh, observation. When all factors are considered, it appears that the futurist view, or futuristic view, is a more consistent approach to interpreting the book of Revelation. Let me, let me restate the uh, futuristic view again, just to get that in front of you. Those who hold to this view generally believe that all the visions revealed to John from chapter 4 verse 1 to the end of the book will be fulfilled just prior to and following the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just prior to, meaning just before Christ comes, a relatively short period of time, and then after He comes, which will take us on into the, what is called the millennium, and then eventually right into uh, the final days where we have the new heavens and the new earth. Now, why is this view, I think, a little more consistent? And obviously, I'm saying at this point in time, I think this is probably the best approach to interpreting Revelation, and which will be the approach that we will use as we move to chapter 4 and on into the end of the book. Which view seems more accurate? Well, number one, this view certainly considers the cultural elements that existed in the Roman Empire in the first century which are presented in the preterist perspective. In other words, any time you read through the book, you cannot deny the elements from chapter 4 to the end that were related to events that were certainly happening in the Roman Empire, such as having to uh, buy and sell by a certain mark or a certain seal. Those things existed. You can't ignore those things. There was a fear of the kings of the east beyond the, Euphra you know, the Euphrates. Those were things that, that were realities. We can't deny that. And this view certainly incorporates that. You don't deny that. Number two, it also recognizes the chronological approach outlined in the historicist view. In other words, when you get into chapter 4 and on, there is a chronological approach. There is a succession of events that take place. So you don't ignore history. The only thing is that in this view, you limit history to a certain segment of time. Uh, the point is that, that uh, the chronology is there, it's just that for approximately 2,000 years, uh, there is no description in the book of Revelation, but it's coming somewhere in the future before Christ returns. And then number three, furthermore, 
The futuristic view certainly emphasizes many of the spiritual lessons outlined by the idealists. I already underscored that by saying, yes, there is a conflict between good and evil. And we're to endure. And we're to overcome evil with good. And so you have a principle there. And that's one of the things that is so related to this whole study we've been doing for nearly five years. And that is going through the scriptures and looking for those principles to live by that, that go beyond culture, that can be applied at any moment in history, at any given time, and in any given place. And so we will be looking at principles and spiritual lessons that emerge from this study of the book of Revelation. So basically what I'm saying here is that this particular view is more consistent, is more comprehensive, and it helps us to really understand uh, the book of Revelation, taking into consideration uh, the things that happened in the first century, Preterist view, the chronology of history, uh, and even the idealism of, of the spiritual approach. So even though we may have a correct view of interpreting the book of Revelation, which I think the best view is futuristic. I do believe, personally, that what happened from chapter 4 on, what John saw, was in the future. Because it says the things that will happen after this, and those things haven't happened yet. And we're still looking for those things to happen. Most of those things, at least. Not that there aren't some things that correlate, but the specific events. So that's a very, very important principle.